trigger's hidden features and where to find them. So we're going to explain, navigate to them to actually allow you to then take this recording and actually do it in your own systems. So I'm Joe Bushnell. You may have seen me already um, on previous webinars. Um, I'm a solutions consultant at Enable.Services. Um, I help customers um, identify what solutions best fit their needs rather than shoehorn them into the wrong solution um, and um, and go down the wrong path. I've um, been working with Sugar for about 19 years, so I have quite a good experience with it. And So I'm Connor. I am a senior software engineer here at Enable, and I basically work as a way of answering any questions that anyone has regarding Sugar. I've been here for two and a half years now, but I like to think my sugar knowledge is quite, quite in depth. Uh, joining us on the panelists and answering your chat questions are Nord um, and Emily. Uh, Nord being a CS, and most people may have already heard of Nord because um, he's very relationship he's built. Yeah, he's, he's he's quite good actually. And Emily, who thank you, Emily, for organising this event for everyone today. And Emily will be the person who's communicating with you after the event if you need recording, et cetera. So for those who don't know and who Enable are, um, we'll begin going since 1994, family-run business, um, implementation partner of Sugar for 19 years. Um, this year, we won the best customer growth um, for performance globally. So that is across the 287 partners of Sugars and um, looking at, both customer turnover and customer additional seats and additional revenue. Um, we're basing Ipswich, Suffolk, um, UK, and uh, there's about 50 of us now. Okay, right, that's enough about us, and let's go into Sugar and actually understand what Sugar's about. Like I said, we're going to make this interactive, so hopefully touch wood, everything goes right. Uh, me and Connor will be getting, kind of talking through it. Here in the feature, what you may or may not know about is Quick Create. Okay, Quick Create um, is up on the top left of your sugar, and you can bring Quick Creates into any module, including the custom modules. So let's have a look at how that works. So, again, like I said, um, live sugar, so you can see it's loading. Um, and we come straight to our dashboard. Where I'm talking about is where you've got this big plus at the top here. This is Quick Create. Not many people know about Quick Create because Really, it's um, people go to modules. The users go to the modules rather than the actual quick rate. But if you click on it, it opens up a, a drawer and it will give you the modules what you have actually selected. So it's nice and easy. If I create, if I was creating leads, click on lead. It's going to put it straight into edit view where I can also enter my data. Um, so it's it's really quite handy in that place. Um, at the top here, if you want to manage quick rate and you're an admin user, you go to admin. Go down to um, configure the actual um, quick create buttons. What is, if I can actually see it, I'm completely blind here. Um, it's here, I believe it is. Um, and if we click on that, it'll bring up two lists, your custom fields and your quick rates over here. And you can drag them from right to left or left to right to actually do it and then save it. That will then save it and add it to the quick rate. So you'll see that if I click on that, it's these ones here. So it's very easy to configure quick create, but not many people use it, but it dri does drive user adoption. And that's what you need inside Sugar. You need to drive that user adoption and make the, your users' lives easier and get the system work for you rather than the actual um, system work if you have a way around. So let's go to the next one. Sweet spot. Okay, so it sounds really strange. I know, sweet spot. It, whoever named this was nothing to do with me, okay? But it is a great feature for users. And again, not many users know about it. So let's go into Sugar, have a look at it, and actually go from there. Okay, so Sweet Spot is if you on your keyboard hold Control Shift and Spacebar. So that is the Control Shift down the bottom left of your keyboard and then the Spacebar at the same time, it brings up this little draw window. Fundamentally, it's a, it's a search kind of panel. So if I start typing, it will look for something. I don't have to press return or anything. It'll look for something. The beauty about this, if I go create or something like that, it will also look for create. If I go calls, it'll look for log calls, import calls, anything to do with it. So it's really good for just getting around the system. It's, it's yeah. probably one of the... I mean, 
it's allowing you to quickly search up actions within modules, quickly access records within any module. It's just a, yeah, quite a simple way. Well, an easy way of doing it. What you can also do with quick rate, see if you cog up the top right here, click on the cog, you can put keywords. So you can do like actions, so you can do shortcut keys. So if I was going creating leads all the time, I may want to put uh, a number one, for instance. You'll see that I can also change the theme here. So if I wanted dark mode or light mode, I can obviously change it here and make it. So if I just save that, obviously I've done one. If I go again, control shift spacebar, control shift spacebar, press number one, great lead. Press enter, go straight into leads. So you can really get fast into actual records you want. That's by the way, using that quick rate. Yeah. It's Again, users don't want to click around. They don't want to have to click around the buttons to actually understand what they're doing. They just want to go back, put up what it is, understand where the customer is, and bring it up, press enter. It's going to take you straight there. Okay, and that's quick rate. Number two. Okay, so that's uh, sweet spot. I said quick rate. Mm -hmm. Let's sweet spot <laughs> Okay, so really quite interesting and easy to use, but not many people actually know about it. Control, shift, space bar. Okay, and that will come up every time. Okay. If we go to the next one, our next one in our uh, in our slides is Focus Draw. Focus Draw is quite a new um, a new product of Sugar. Yeah. It came in Sugar Thirteen, didn't it? Yeah, Sugar Thirteen. What it does is no new view. So normally, when you go into a record inside Sugar, you go into Record Card View, where all the sub panels are below. And it feels sometimes a little bit old school. Yeah. So sometimes you just want it kind of a dashboard view where you can drag and drop and drag the actual scale yeah, in it yeah. and make it easy. So let's go and have a look at focus draw. Click on the button again, our sugar cube opens up a sugar, hopefully, if everything's going to plan. There we go. So we can have focus draw on any module, any module you like. When you will see focus draw is when you hover. On the list view or any record view, you'll see this this kind of cube, um, or actually a square and rectangle as well. Looks like one square, two rectangles. Yeah, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> uh, it, it's there. So you'll see it if you click on one of these. It'll open up a draw to the left, right to left here, and you can see that we've got in this case um, a record a record card view. We've got a timeline. We've got some uh, relationship re um, reports. Beauty about this is it's all drag and drop. It's like the dashboard. So you can really customize this to the users, whatever the user wants to see. It works in the same way as dashboards. So down the bottom right, the free kind of burger down here. If we open the burger, we can add dashlets what are related to our record, our focus draw. So like I said, reports, et cetera, can come in here, pipeline metrics. Uh, maps, if you've got the Maps plugin, it's it's whatever you want. You just have to click on it, save it, and then it will add it to the bottom. And if you go to the bottom, it will be there, and you can then drag it to where you want to be dragging it. Just like your dashboards, focus draws can be shared with users. So, And you can have certain users use one focus draw, other users do the others. And you can see that we've got the favorites up here. So you can favorite a focus draw or go into having many focus draws, depending on how you want to use it, really. It's yeah. quite easy. Um, to enable focus draws, again, admin, go to focus draws, and it'll be there. But it, like I said, focus draws works all over the place. So if I went into an actual record view and I scroll down to your scroll, you'll see that even the contacts underneath here, oh, if I just um, <laughs> stop the actual sugar automator, You'll see that focus draws there. So if I was even under Morgan Sindel in this case, and I want to look in Linda, instead of having to go into her, I can go and look at her records and look at a focus draw and just go give me all the information. The other beauty about focus draws is that you can layer focus, focus draws. So you can see I'm in Linda, but I can then go, so I can go. Yeah, you can keep <laughs> on going. So it's kind of a tab view across the top here, as you can see. And then I may want to go back or I may want to go, okay, what was that customer visit there, et cetera, and keep on going and then click back or click forward. So if I click back, it will go back into Linda and just focus draw. You can see I've also got my arrows on the right left-hand side here. I can get my right and left going here. 
And you can go down to the next record, next record, next record. So if I was doing a call list, for instance, and I'm doing prospecting, I could literally bring up a big list, focus for on quickly, mm -hmm. use the timeline over here, and then we'll come on to that in a minute, with actions to actually input that data. Really good um, feature of Sugar and Sugar 13, and lots of people use it. Okay. So let's come out of that. Okay. So we're done... Sweet spot, we've done Pretty quick great. rate and we've done focus roll. What's our next one? Let's have a look. Reports dashboard. Okay, this is massive. Okay, so everyone knows reports and they know dashboard. Well, I hope you do. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, this is how you drive adoption inside sugar. You build interactive dashboards, you build reports. You show the display the data in a different format. Instead of a list of data, displaying pipelines, displaying reports into like this one. This one's a tree graph report, so it's very they are my favorite. They are really <laughs> colorful. Okay, um, but you can really interact it. So again, let's go into it and have a look. We've got some pre-built, but I'll quickly show you how easy it is to create dashboards. Okay, because we've got a little bit of time, so we'll go into it. So this is a dashboard. Um, for a management dashboard, as you can see at the top here, where we've got lots and lots of pieces of information. A bit busy, to be perfectly honest here, but other people like it. If you, on dashboards, again, just like our focus draws, we can scale them, we can move them, we can share them with other users. Yeah. So you can really start to utilize them. Um, on the actual dashboards as well, if we go on the actual dashlets, we've got filters as well. Yeah, this so, is Jason. Yeah, this is new. So okay. you can filter. So this one here is obviously opportunity by rep at the moment, and we'll just make that a bit bigger so you can see. Yes, we can drill into it just like we could before, and we can see what that piece of the pipe or that piece of the graph is, and we can move it around, again, using focus draw to have a look down and go down a list. However, the beauty about this is that you can also use runtime filters. So you can filter on your reports on the fly. So I can say, is existing business or new? I just want to change it. I'm only going to say new. Okay. And you can have that as complicated. So all of your conditionals on your reporting, when you're doing your reports, creating your reports, if you don't know how to create reports, I did a webinar about creating reports on my last webinar, please. It's on YouTube. So go and have a look. But there's a thing called runtime filters you take a runtime that's how you get your filters these ones into your dashlets you can also view the dashlets where you couldn't before on no. as a data as a piece of data so you can see all of the if you've got a summation with details yeah so this is summation with details before i would have just shown as a rows and columns whereas yeah now it actually shows that each group which is definitely is useful. Extremely, <laughs> extremely yeah. useful. And you can see we can drill through to actually get the data. So that's nice and easy. If you go to edit any of these reports, you get this nice kind of window um, on the actual reports where you select what report you wish to utilize. Obviously, refreshing. What your default is, because you may want it to go straight to data. You may not want it to go to... Um, chart it may want to go straight to filter so you condition it straight away next tab and tab along is what we're seeing so where do we want actually totals at the top stacked across the top of our report do we want it in middle top and you can choose where you want the data so if i wanted the totals across the top of my new business and existing business in this case i can do it my legends down here my labels so my x and my y i can again if i wanted to I could change it if I wanted to and call it yeah. something else. It's up to me what I want to change it to. Although my report is a vertical bar, I may want a dashboard to change it to something else. It doesn't affect the original report. No. So it may be somebody else's report, and you want to see it in a donut graph or a tree map rather than a um, rather than a bar chart. It's up to you though. Again, data tables. You can show the totals. You can display how long you want it and how you want to sort it. And like I said, runtime filters are really important. If I save that, you, you know, I just obviously changed it. You can see that because I put the total at the top, it's now 948. We can see that I've got a condition on here, so we can just reset that if we wanted to and reset it back to default dashlets. So it's very easy to use, manipulate, drill through, and you've also got the ability to exclude your, um, your legends at the top if you wanted to. Okay. So really powerful, easy to use, 
And you can, like I said, if you wanted to, create a dashboard, give it a name, uh, um, uh, webinar dashboard, for instance. Okay, webinar dashboard, save it. Once we save it, you'll see down the bottom right, we can just add our dashlets and they could be anything from, if you're using our enable.services credit save connector, you can pull that in if you wanted to, DocuSign, um, approvals, just normal list views, anything you've got here. You've got so many. If it's reports, you have this report dashlet though, okay? Mm. And that's probably the most used, I'd probably say. Oh, of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now with this being on and including the list view, it's almost, yeah, may as well create a report to show the data rather than using a list view dashlet and manually creating it all. Whereas with a report, it's something that the whole team can use. So it's really easy. And you can just click on that, choose your report, what you're actually doing, and you can see I can just put my details in here and save. And that's going to create my report and, in this case, create a final report. And you can see quite easy, and I can drill down to it and understand what it is. Okay, so really easy, and you can just add these, drag these, and show however you want to do it. If you want to share them with other users, there's a thing called Manage Dashboards up here. And if you manage a dashboard, obviously make sure it's not in your own team. Um, so in this case, it's in gym, so you want to put it into global or sales or whatever team you are in, because otherwise your other users won't be able to see it. No. Okay, so you need to make sure it's in the right team. But when they when you do come in, you simply use the star button. And if you use that star button, so if I want this account manager overview, star it, you'll see that now it's here. I can now view that kind of pipeline and that actual record. So it's really quite easy to use, set dashboards. Um, and you can, like I said, set them up for the users, set them up for the roles who you're implementing into Sugar and show them yeah. the data that they need to see at the right times instead of having to scroll around. They can interact, click into it, et cetera. Okay. So we're now coming up to halfway through. <laughs> this is a new feature of 13. Um, lots of lots of people ask for it. I want to create a report, but I want to relate it to the record I'm looking at. And it's not hard at all, but most people don't know it's there. It was a feature of 13, and it's probably one of, the, one of my favorites as a salesperson to be able to see what opportunities people have been purchasing on months, what products have been saying, what issues you can relate, relate to the record. So again, let's go into um, Shoe. Sure. And understand what I'm talking about because sometimes it's um, I talk a lot. <laughs> um, going into the record, so this works on any record, custom modules, anything with the intelligence pane. Intelligence pane. When I say that, I mean it, this bit on the right hand side. It's called the intelligence pane. Okay, this this window over here, mm -hmm. and then we just move ourselves up here. So if I click on the Burger at the bottom, add a dashlet, and maybe um, I'm looking at, uh, oh, that wasn't good, was it? Let's go back into it. Sorry about that. Um, again, live, so you can see. Um, if I go to reports dashlet again, bring in my report I'm looking at. So maybe I'm going for a revenue, I don't know, I've, I've got one, revenue line item sold this quarter. Because I'm creating it not in a dashboard, but in it related to a record, you'll see this new little this new little button down here up here. And it's quite easy to miss. <laughs> so if you tick it, it says, okay, what what are you actually linking it to? In this case, I'm obviously linking it to revenue line items because I want to see what people have sold. Just click it, and then I'll see, save it. That will then on the right hand side, right at the bottom, it'll be on here, but you can see it's here. And if I scroll it all the way up the top so everyone can see it, because it's uh, <laughs> my word, we've got a lot here. Ooh, and, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I've lost it. Doing well there. When I, and there it is. Okay, scroll back up the top. Let's try. So you can see um, we can move it up and keep on moving it up. Come on. There we go. We're up. We're up. Okay. So you can see this record. The reason why I want to move it up top so that, you, that when I go to the next record, you can see it changing. Um, there we go. Perfect. Well, we're up. Yeah, we're up. Yeah. <laughs> Once you've done that once, you don't have to do it again. You'll be glad to know because that is quite painful trying to get it from the bottom up when you've got about 100 like I have there on the demo. But the beauty about this is it's all interactive again. So I'm looking at Morgan Sendel. 
So this is the actual um, item sold for Morgan to send on in this case in Q1 and Q, in Q2 and Q3. Again, if I click onto it, it's going to go same with Morgan send offs. No one else's. You'll see the focus up drawers there again. You can see that. So it's coming up on every single record. So it's quite nice that if I wanted to see it, I can go and click on it. But again, if I click on this one, it's going to show me what the 6K is. Very easy to use. If I go to the next record down and I've got my little arrows up here, you'll see that this hopefully changes. There we go. It's gone the other way. Around. Yeah. So you can Looks see. Well. And then again, you can see. So, so we can have reports, reports, any kind of reports that you want, because you can report on anything inside Sugar. So any custom fill. So even if you bring in, I don't know, data from Epic or SAP, um, Business Central, maybe you've got an integration with um, Sage or QuickBooks or anything. <laughs> Because the data then belongs in Sugar, it means that you can view it and you can drill into it. And you can use focus draws and obviously relate reports related to. And you may want them side by side, so you may want to scale that smaller. And you can do that with this intelligence pane and reports related to. Again, really powerful, really, um, it's just increasing usability. Instead of having to drill into a report, finding out what account, drilling down to the account, it's just there and near my face. Okay, so users will like that. Okay, so we're speeding through this. I've just looked at time, but we're going. So we're on five. Um, I have got one other, so I'm gonna we're we're going to go. So it might be eleven instead of ten, depending on the timing here. So tile view. This is the last one I speak about. And then the voice <laughs> can settle, and I'll pass it over to Connor. Pass the baton. Okay, tile view. So tile view. It's been was in 12. Mm -hmm. However, it's been updated for Sugar 13. Um, the beauty about Tile View is that um, you can have it on any module now. You can put it on yeah. any module. So before it was just kind of um, only for really opportunities or lead management, but you can now have it on cases and anything, anything really with a drop down status field because you just it drives from the status so let's go have a look at it and see what i'm on about and, and see where that button is because it is this one is really it hard is to find if you don't yeah. know where it is okay so going to whatever module you want accounts contacts opportunities so we're going opportunities in this case oh typical going straight into it but this is this is kind of a view what you normally expect not very easy this little button, this little button going down, three arrows going downwards. So kind of a graph, what's a negative graph. Yeah. I don't know why it's that. Oh, like graph, so yeah. yeah, it doesn't really look like tile views in there. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll let sugar off in that case. Um, but you click on it, it opens up tile view. And in this case, we can see our revenue. Um, we can see, in this case, the stages. We can see how many opportunities. We can use filters. So if I just want to look at ones where it's signed to me, I can change it and use the filters and conditions inside Sugar. Again, focus draw. <laughs> you get the idea. I'll go focus draw everywhere if I can because it's just so easy. On tile view, obviously it's looking at, in this case, I'm looking at all the statuses. You can sort by date if you wanted to, sort by anything at the top here. Like I said, you can do it. We can also have multiple. So you can you can see I've got sales stage, but I may want the actual opportunities by time. In this case, I feel that we're all closing on the same thing. But you can see I can drag one, drag them around on here and move them. Yeah, it's changed the day as well. Yeah, it's, it's so easy. So easy to use. And it's just obviously updating and saving the record in the background. So although it was May, it's now going to be March and April. Really good. How do you get these into modules? Again, up to the top profile if you're an admin user go to admin there's a separate section now for tile view so um colin's going to use his eyes and tell me where it is where i miss it no, there it is I <laughs> always miss it um so if you go to tile view settings across here these are enable modules so you can see that if i click here these are all my modules so i can choose what modules i want for tile view if i click here whatever i stick to that top here will be here so i go leads you can see leads is going by lead status. I could show the total columns if I wanted to and just get it to count or look at a, maybe a marketing um, column total. And then I can choose what the actual fields are relating to the drop down on my status. If I don't want them, maybe I don't want to look at Z. Yeah. yeah, get rid of it, recycled. Well, I may want it for marketing, I suppose. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to get converted. 
No. No, because I've already converted them. I should be looking on the account yeah. opportunity at that time. Yeah. yeah. So really, really easy. Again, user adoption. Tile view is really good because it gives users a different view. Users are sometimes, and this is why I'm going with dashboards and tile views, is because people are sold on images and display and making it easy for themselves. Me, who doesn't like fancy colours? <laughs> <laughs> fancy colours, there we go. There we go. Yeah, fancy <laughs> colours. But you can see them all here. You can also choose what you want to display in this kind of section here. So although I've got up, you'd probably want the assigned user in there, wouldn't you? So yeah. you could actually see the assigned user, but you can choose what's actually in this kind of display as well on the tile view. So you can, it really drills it down. And then you can also, again, like I said, move them around to where you want them to go. So really quite a brilliant bit of functionality with Inside Sugar, what drives the actual adoption across the board. Okay. Again, <laughs> arrows going down to get it. You're normally in this view here. So click on that little arrow is going down and you'll see it. Cool. Right. Okay. That's tell you. Um, oh, it's me again. Uh, yes, oh, yes, yeah. my word. Okay. <laughs> timeline. Okay. That, that does say timeline manager and view. Okay. So what do I mean by timeline? Timeline is account timeline, contact timeline, lead timeline. It's the combination of calls, meetings, tasks, notes anything really and the reason why i say anything because it is out of the box calls meetings tasks yeah. and notes not many people know they can change it and this is a sugar cell only at the moment got to tell you that because um just in case we've got any enterprise customers on here so an enterprise if you don't know enterprise is sugar on site Sugar Cell is AWS, Amazon. So if we go into um, a particular record or anything like this, um, and we went into, let's go to that Morgan symbol or Wil 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 Wilmot Dixon. Dixon. See, this is a builder's demo system that we built. Uh, but on the right-hand side down here now, I'm just going to drag it back up. These are our timelines. So you can see that this is my timeline. In this case, I've got count update, calls, meetings, task notes, the normal ones, like I said. Okay. You can use timelines to create calls. This is an easy way. Instead of users having to scroll down, go to calls, create a call, you can use timeline just to go like that, create call, and it'll just log the call against a related record. So it knows I was in Wilmot Dixon, so it's going to relate it to it automatically. Nice and easy to create it. Emails come into here, anything comes into here. So timeline is probably my my best dash look when I come into a record view, apart from the reports themselves, because it just gives me an overview of what's gone on very quickly. And I can search and just say, I'm just looking at the account updates, or I'm just looking at the calls and what's been happening. Okay. However, what many people don't know about timeline, and skip timeline, burgers down the bottom, it's full of account timeline, okay? What many people don't know is that if you go to admin and we go to studio, down here. And then once we're in studio, we go across the modules on the left hand side. And we were just in the account. So you want accounts. So you're also got all your modules across down here. Click on accounts. You'll see a little section down here for sugar sale customers time on timeline. Click on timeline. It then enables you to select which which modules are showing in that timeline. It's really powerful because you may have custom modules. Maybe you've got, let's go Epicor again, Epicor, SAP, yeah. um, like I said, NetSuite. You may have orders coming in from one of those systems and you want to tell the salesperson or the customer success person or who is using the system that a order has just happened. And instead of them having to scroll down to orders, yeah. it's just going to appear in their timeline. So they can go, Oh, someone made a call meeting. Oh, then they may place an order there. That's pretty cool. And then they place an order on a broader. Oh, maybe we may need to go and phone. So instead of the continuous scrolling, you can just simply add them in here and it'll obviously attach them to the, you know, the timeline. So really, again, powerful to the users, the end users. You can set it up on any module. So if I go to cases, timeline, you'll see them everywhere. So contracts, timeline anything okay so it's really quite a powerful feature not many people know about it and that's why we're interested in our hidden features yeah. <laughs> cool so 
I'm going to pass this over. Pass the mouse over. Oh, yeah. My colleague in front of me. Sorry if you uh, wanted to hear Joe for the rest of this, but <laughs> my, my turn now. <laughs> no, I don't think they do. So, so action, buttons. action buttons. This is a feature that, I mean, in a sense, it's all over sugar because the edit button is an action button. Um, create is an action button, but no, not many people actually create their own ones. So let's have a look. There we go. Anyway, now. Lovely. So I'll show you one that I made earlier. <laughs> Let me go on to quotes. I've actually incorporated this with another area, which we'll go into in a bit. But if I set this quote stage as quotes accepted, when this disappears, I've got a download quote button. So this is just making things a bit simpler compared to having to go into the action menu, having to go down here, as you can see, you can't even see the bottom of that. So it's just adding ease for users. And this is the only stage where maybe you need someone to actually send out a quote. And so if we click this, gives it a little notification and it's triggered our doc merge. See, I use action buttons on the leads and contacts, and I've got a LinkedIn yeah. lookup. Yeah. Because I just find it easier because I can insert the actual first name, last name, do a LinkedIn search. What's what's nice and easy. Exactly. Yeah. It's really quite handy. And if we do this, we can see oh lovely. Everything's on here that we wanted. Simple as that. Lovely purple <laughs> quote that you've created earlier. Yeah, exactly. Thank yeah, you very absolutely. much. Oh, I think <laughs> everything's purple. Yeah. <laughs> So you can have those action buttons. You can put them at the top. How many can you go across? Can you have 100 across there? No. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a limit. Recommend? As you can see, there is X width. Um, so I'd recommend there's probably three action buttons, yeah. but you can do what's called a button group. Okay. So with a button group, it will show up as... Let's just move myself. There we go. If we go back into the quote, actually another hidden feature, recently accessed. <laughs> Not many people know that. And it's extremely useful. I use it all the time. So the button group will end up looking like this, where it's got a drop down and it'll show individual buttons. Okay. To configure these, you will need to go into admin and then into studio. So if we scroll down on the left, I mean, this is, again, another hidden feature. <laughs> I know a lot of people glance over um, where you can just expand these and go into the direct areas instead of having to click through and that will load. Yeah. So if we go into this action button that I made, it's first I'd go a little area here where you can just give a little brief description, help text, comment text if need be, and then complete the buttons. On here, so first off, you've got button one. Let's say button one has these properties. Label, tool tip, it's a little description of it. Show icon, so as you can see on the right, it's got a preview area. So anything you do, it will update and show you how it's going to look. Icon, they've got many, 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 many icons in here. It's actually it is a good thing that she was done. So whatever sort of button you need, it's got the icon for it. But if you don't want one, just untick that. Color scheme, whole bunch, go for a nice pink coral. Uh, stop an error, just in case there's an issue. You can tick that. Okay. And then you'll, it won't go, try and continue with it. So what type of actions can you create? So you've got the dock merge there, what I can see. So, what ones can you do? Yeah. There's many. So a sign record, we can say if you are finished dealing with a case or if you need to escalate a case, for example, you can do that. You can have it just click a button and it pushes it over. Or if you're in the sales team on an opportunity, you've cl made, you've closed it, you've won it, it now needs to go to the accounts team to invoice them. Okay. And as Joe was saying earlier with the LinkedIn, we've got an open URL action which you can include the first and last name of your say lead contact 
and you can search across LinkedIn, Google, if need be, government website to look up the company number, all that. Okay. Cool. That's really cool. So, yeah, action buttons, everyone. So, <laughs> if I could recommend your fingers, go and build some action buttons and make, again, your users a little bit easier to use live sugar. Exactly. Right. All right. Right, okay, what's our next one then? Tenant season read only. So you can see that I've put the hard bits to <laughs> and the easy bits to me. Um, so yeah, so yeah, go on, explain what we're doing with family. I'll try not to take any blame for anything I say is a, a bit yeah. technical. <laughs> so with the action button that I just showed, this actually optimizes the use of a dependency. So if we go on to this one, as when I set it to stage to close accepted, it appeared. If I set it to delivered, it goes away. So that is a dependency. The field is dependent on another to be visible. I suppose this works well for different roles. Exactly. So yeah. if I had a role, I may not want to see everything on the screen, everything no. on the page. So I could then use dependence to actually say, if it's this product, I only want to see this thing, or if they're yeah. this interesting kind of thing. So That's good. exactly that. If you need to hide certain things, say, yeah, if it's some product, there's so many options that you have. Don't need that. If I you're mean, on credit stop, you tick box and it brings up the credit yeah, stop details. Exactly that. Yeah, and cool. here's another bit I show uh, made earlier. <laughs> if you go onto this one, you know, I'm just going to change this one. For a second, no, because it's closed. One, if we say that is uh, <laughs> need analysis. There we go. So, if we change this to close lost, it should update. No, uh, ah, uh -huh. no, I do apologize. I moved it. Let's go on to another one. <laughs> okay. We are live. <laughs> yes, we definitely are that. Like, yeah, on revenue, right? Okay. I don't on revenue because this is where you go before the opportunity. So, if the sales stage is closed, lost, then we want to actually give a reason as to why we have lost this. Yeah, a revenue line item because you know, a so, good little description on everything is always needed. So, little that Phil wasn't there until you went to close lost. No. And it appeared so it's just hidden and as you can see it's even pushed everything else up because that whole row was empty so there's no empty space that's what sugar tries to aim for it doesn't yep. want empty space so how do you do that i mean if we go into studio in the admin area yeah and what we'll do find revenue line items on the side here fields and if we scroll down to the one i made close loss reason so with this one, with it being a drop down, I've got it based on a parent drop down, and I've chosen sales stage. So if I edit the visibility on this, as you can see, it's got the available options being what is in the closed last reason field, and all the sales stages fields. What you can do is just drag any options into these, and when the sales stage is on this option this is what will show if there's nothing there then it will hide it because there's nothing to choose from yep. so there's no point <laughs> we've also got a formula so if i go onto another field which i made i've created a dependency so since this isn't a drop down this is using a formula this is quite a simple one in well to me it's quite simple <laughs> so, <laughs> looking and what is that so this function is just looking at the field i made earlier the close loss reason and if it's set to other because if i set this to other and now i can give a brief description on what it is right. and um no budget no budget simple as <laughs> so nice and easy so you can really use the dependent fields anywhere then so any yeah. module any kind of field anything inside sugar so 
you can really slim down. So this looks really quite scary to me with all these fields here. Exactly. So you can really hide all these fields yeah. away and just have the fields more related to the When you've completed one area, hide there, it will go on to the next. Makes sense. I think we we, we use Sugar Live, by the way. <laughs> and when we put a cut when we mark a a company and organization as a customer, we have to do an onboarding overview, and that's a dependent field that comes in. Yeah. So you can really start to utilize them to actually get the user adoption and to complete the fields that needed to be completed at the right time because um they you they work with require this as well, don't they? Yeah, they do. So I'm not sure if you saw on here, but this field is actually required, but if it's not actually on show, you don't have to, it's not required to fill in because it's hidden. But you know what, I'll make it on here. <laughs> so let's say I want this to be, uh, it's gonna be required if, let's have a think, what can we do? <laughs> If we go for, let's say, next step. Let's go for next step, actually. If and, well, I'll click on there. Get in alphabetical order, make it nice and easy. So required if, works exactly the same so. as the dependency formula. Uh, but if I change this to, status let's say or sell stage i should say so quick little paste in and then if we go to the end let's say if the sales stage is closed if i can type <laughs> closed one then we have to fill in the next steps this is extremely useful just ensuring that users actually fill in the data <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so you can use those required ifs um, anywhere in the system again yeah. and it's going to allow you to actually to really work with the system so yeah really really powerful just like dependencies required ifs if you're on particular sales stages you may want to say now this document fields now we need these yeah. these other items we need these date fields completed because you've got this have you got some negotiation? Who are the decision makers? Have you got all the details? So lots of different reasons you can use that. Yeah. yeah. As you see with this module, the revenue line items on this system, we have just got one list. Yeah. We haven't really customized this no, layout. No. So um, it can hide. It's hiding a lot of fields. Yeah. And so with required, okay. if I was to change this to close one, Click save, it's going to highlight. I need to do that. That's really quite cool. That's yeah. a really quite cool functionality. Okay. Um, our next one, our last one in this case. So, images. So, this is something, yeah, not many people know of, but you can actually have images onto product templates and pull them through. That'd be good for one. presentations and things like this. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that there? So, with the introduction of Doc Merge, yeah. you can now export PowerPoints, Word documents, not just PDFs. So, actually, since I've done it earlier, let's download this PDF again. So I'm just going to let's close accepted. And let's generate. So on Doc Merge, we can do PDF. Word, present, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. sorry, and, and Excel. Excel. Excel, yeah, 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 Excel as well. And it also has revision history as well, doesn't it? It that. does, yeah. So for those who don't know, revision history goes against the downloaded document. So if we actually show this. So you can see how many times on who's revising yeah. and who's actually downloading so, it. Yeah, this type, quote PDF, from repairs required, we have downloaded it five times. To um, make sure it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I may have done a little bit of testing before this meeting. <laughs> and you can see each of these is each version of the document. Okay. Yeah. And so, so it's hidden now. Uh, yeah. There we go. Download that. 
you could utilize the downloads with DocuSign. There's a DocuSign mm -hmm. integration as well. So exactly that. Know that. Um, and and yeah. find the document. It's just a simple little button yeah. that appears. Yeah. So as you can see, this document has been able to pull through images, which... So do you put them on the product catalog? Where do you put them in sugar? Yeah, so it's exactly that. <laughs> so what I've done from the quote on the product, this is the product catalog that I linked to it. And as you can see, I created a new image field on the product catalog to which I can upload an image on. So then you can upload as many as you like and just have them on your quotes to make them more yeah. graphical and more pleasing to the eye. So for each of these, you know, you can add an image to them. And so then it just presents things a little nicer. Make sure the customer knows what they're buying. <laughs> People are sold on images. Yeah. Again, like I said. Fancy colors yeah. and images. So this is... My new layout on sugar and the new focus draw, sweet spot and all that. Because people are sold by images. People want to use the system where it has graphical um, yeah. graphical displays. Yeah, I don't think images are used enough in this system. No, I mean, we use uh, we use uh, highlight fields a lot. So if anyone wants to know about highlight fields, they literally drop downs with colours. Um, because, <laughs> like again, people are sold on colours. So you can do them as well. Um, this, I mean, yeah, there you go. Poor health, etc.